You did add 1.9 million customers in the fourth right. quarter. Yep. And it's true, the easy ads are gone. So you do have to look around. Streaming TV... It's, well, it's wonderful to hear your interpretation of the 19th quarter in a row over 1 million uh, net ads. Yeah. Uh, in, in 2017, we took 80% of all the postpaid phone growth in the industry. And in Q4, our postpaid phone nets were greater than the sum total of AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint. Uh, and by the way, if you look at it, we did 891 postpaid uh, phones in Q4, and we did 2.8 million for the year, which is 80%. And we did, um, if, you, if you do the math, 1.9 million net additions, 5.7 million for the year. Our growth is certainly not slowing down. You're probably referring to guidance. Uh, well, and just in general, the landscape, yeah. because it's true the on-carrier campaign was hugely successful over the yes. last five years, but now you're dependent on more fundamental things and on new strategies, such as a shift to online streaming, which you had said right. you wouldn't do, but you are now. Tell us a little bit well, more the, the, about... But be careful. A couple of things, um, and I really apologize for interrupting you. The, um, we have a total market share of 19%. Mm. We have 16% market share of postpaid phones, right? And so there's tremendous amounts of room to grow. On a daily basis, this quarter, uh, we are porting with Verizon 1.91 to 1. So a lot of customers coming in, 1.84 to 1 with AT&T and 1.4 with Sprint. So we're gaining customers every day. We aren't new to video, right? So we've been playing in this space. First thing we did was called Binge On which is a way to allow free video streaming uh, for, for customers. And then we went, moved to Netflix on us. Now what you're referring to is we just bought a company called Layer 3 TV. We haven't announced what it is we're gonna offer. But what I'll tell you, it's something like this. Your phone, your smartphone, has never met your TV. Yet your smartphone knows everything you want to watch on social media, has all of your skinny bundles, et cetera, and all the intelligence. And millennials and Gen Zs, they don't want to stand in front of a big square panel and poke. So we're going to bring something that is the integration of streaming and social media and content driven by the smartphone. And we're going to introduce it to the TV. It's like an MVPD, right? It's like Dish, a Sling, or one of these. So we know vaguely what it's going to be. But will it be able to compete with AT&T and Verizon now that they've acquired or maybe will acquire huge content providers? Verizon and AT&T are both so confused and so distracted. I mean, think about AT&T bought DirecTV for, oh my God, billions of dollars. And the business they bought is declining, right? And so what they do is they create this DirecTV now. Do you know how they sell it? They tell their customers, I'll sell you unlimited, but only if you take DirecTV now in a bundle. A bundle is not something you want with something you don't want, right? Please don't get me started on Verizon. They bought AOL, right? Iconic 90s or 80s uh, internet company. They bought Yahoo, but mainly for advertising. They created Go90, which is the biggest debacle ever. And right now they're lying to America about what 5G is. At the Super Bowl, Lowell McAdams, who I call Alexander Grell and Graham Bell McAdams, took a 5G tablet and used 28 gigahertz spectrum to make a phone call. He was staring at the tablet going, hello, can you hear me? I could hear you before. That's not what 5G is. 5G is huge and it's going to be gigantic Well, let's talk about us. how much money you're going to put into 5G and where. And, by the way, the idea that you have almost as much spectrum as Verizon now, but it's not the best kind, perhaps. Okay, well, oh, but I have, we have, 54% uh, more spectrum per customer than Verizon and 46% more spectrum per customer than AT&T. By the way, not only do I have more, Verizon doesn't have enough. Their network's choking. I don't know if you use Verizon but it's, it's slowing down because they can't handle unlimited. Now, what we just bought was a nationwide gigantic swath of 600 megahertz low band spectrum. Anybody that tells you that isn't the most prime spectrum, which by the way, I'm deploying 5G in as well. The reason they're claiming it's not what it is, is they didn't show up. Verizon didn't show up for the auction. Comcast backed out. AT&T bought was first that they backed out. So we cleaned their clock. So how much do you invest in that area and geographically where? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we gave guidance on cash capex, 4.9 to 5.3 billion. We've been very consistent, constantly uh, deploying. We already deployed uh, 580 cities and 600 megahertz. And the big issue is as of right now, which is very different, 
five years ago, uh, I had 33 million customers, I have 73 million now. My network was not nationwide, 322 million, 325 million, two and a half million square miles by the end of this year. The big play too though is, I'm having my distribution catch up. Added 2,800 stores last year, cover 260 million pops. So network expansion, retail expansion, we're bringing the fight to cities around the country that heretofore only had two choice bad and worse and now we're going to bring it well, in. Well do you see further consolidation down the road? Obviously the sprint yeah. is gone by the wayside for now. Nothing's but gone. Exactly. Yeah. Well are you back talking? Listen, no we're not talking. Mm. Right now everything that made sense a year ago makes ten times more sense right now. My theory is all content's going to the internet, all internet is going mobile. That's why you know, our industries by the way Bonnie, they're defined by the infrastructure that you built. You build a cable, you're a cable company. You build a wireless, you're a wireless company. Customers don't care. They're all going to come together, so cable players have to enter wireless, not in that silly way that they are now. People need to have access to content, and players like us need scale and or the ability to migrate. So where else are you looking then? Plenty of free cash flow. Are you thinking that maybe you'll institute a, a, a dividend or better dividend, more buybacks, or will it be maybe to search for a new target? Yeah, yes, yes, and yes. I mean, I, think about the fact that what we had... You know, that much we, free we, cash flow. Listen, we had $2.7 billion worth of free cash flow in, in uh, 2017. We announced a 16 to 19, 46 to 48 percent compound annual growth of free cash flow, including, by the way, the buyback of shares that we're doing already. That's tremendous free cash flow. And we're the only player, by the way, with service revenue growing and margins expanding. So, so we do have that option. Um, we are interested in what we're doing, which is an organic migration, but we realize that there are ways to grow scale. There are things that we can put together with T-Mobile. One of the things we have that's great is a brand that's amazing. You are not opening your jacket right now. <laughs> uh, well, I, I can give you my title, not only my, uh, but our brand is huge and it stands for something, something big and getting, uh, getting bigger. It's 16,400 stores in a nationwide network. There's well, a Deutsche lot of Will Deutsche Telekom up at stake? It's about 66% right now. Yeah, I, it, you know, Deutsche Telekom has already uh, made public, and you know, I'm sure they'll talk about it more, that in, in the uh, share repurchase program that we're doing, not only are they not going to sell shares, but they've, uh, they've discussed their plans to also buy shares. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, uh, this is a great investment for them. Do you and, still consider all... yourself in competition with the big wireless providers, or are you looking beyond that at this point? Oh, no, they're dead. Uh, we, you know, we're way past them. That road, so road kill. Who's your peer? Who, who are your competition? Uh, um, in, in wireless in the U.S.? Well, I'm asking so, you, who do you consider to be the companies that you're... In competition with. I, no, and we, obviously we compete with AT and T and Verizon, but they're very easy because they're distracted, they're dumb and dumber, they don't care about their customers. Um, so we compete with them clearly, but we compete with them in a totally different way, called the uncarry, called solving pain points, called loving your customers. It's foreign to them. So yeah, we compete with them, but they're easy.